So friends what if Naruto was girls as Power Rangers in Senran Kagura movie? Ah, well, this is hopeless that girl is playing right into the hands of those Ima, and her friends are no better enabling her like that. A super secret ninja art. Fuma Korone Jutsu that permanently seals a Ima back into their own world, at the cost of one's own life force that girl must, lost at least half her lifespan, casting that Jutsu. This cannot continue, especially with that breach of Ima inside the city, it can only mean that Shin is on the move. Sorry girls, but none of you are worthy to carry the mantle of Senranger after all it already had to be teenagers not only with attitude, but with the perfect blend of light and darkness Kukuku. Emma. They are one of many dark forces that plague the world and are known as demons that are born from the malice of humans, they are unknown to the larger world except for the shinobi, who have spent generations fighting them in the shadows divided into two factions, they fight against each other to lure out the Emma and hunt them however, due to the power of the Emma. Most shinobi don't make it out alive. In modern times, the barrier between the human world and the parallel world where Emma thrive is as thin as ever, the threat of Emma increases year by year, with no progress to their extermination being made shinobi, who are split between light and darkness, clash against each other. Sometimes forgetting who their true target is and leaving them weak for the Emma to feast on them, it is human nature that proves to be their undoing, and those that are lucky enough to survive are served painful reminders of their failures as long as they live. The Emma are led by Shin, a legendary Emma who is said to be the first of their kind, as well as the species heart and soul, they are a powerful entity that is credited for many large-scale catastrophes through its brethren besides human nature, Shin is another reason discord is sown through the human world, they are nestled in the Emma's home dimension. Waiting for the chance to invade the human world like it did centuries ago, growing stronger with the blood spilled by the foolish shinobi. However, Shin is not unbeatable, they have originally invaded the human world before, bringing despair and discord, with nothing to stop them except for one group. The Senrangers. A group of female individuals from all walks of life, imbued with the power of crystal saturated in a mysterious universal force of bioenergy, it is mixed with chakra that gives them powers much as various abilities, and transforming to a super-powered form together, they fought back against the darkness of the Ima forces, while they have lost some of their comrades in the fight. They were able to defeat and seal away Shin before they could cause any more damage, now the crystals are hidden away, waiting for the time when Shin re-emerges from his realm. Come present day, powerful Yama have infiltrated the human world, seeking to prepare for the arrival of Shin, who will bring untold suffering and despair among the unaware humans with good and evil continually clashing, a new group is necessary to destroy Shin, and this generation Shinobi is unprepared for the horrors that Shin will bring. Hence a new generation of Senrangers is about to be born. It was a normal spring day at the normal high school of Kanahara Academy in Tokyo, Japan, the sky was blue, the air was clean, and the sound of something getting their guts kicked in echoed rather loudly in the back of the school, a thug was sent flying into a wall and slid down with an audible groan. You got a death wish, Yuzumaki. No one roughs up my boys and gets away with it. The gang leader snarled at the assailant. The assailant in question is a young woman with sun-kissed blonde hair, with two twin tails tied with blue ribbons, her heterochromic eyes, with her right iris being blue and her left violet, seemed to glow in the dim atmosphere, as she wiped some blood off of her whisker-marked cheek, her female Kanahara Academy green and white sailor Fuku uniform. Which had a red ribbon tied in the front that laced through a loop attached to the blouse, did nothing to hide her attractive, slender figure, especially those large F cup breasts. Her blue miniskirt fluttered from the beatdown that had just occurred, resulting in her black knee high socks and orange sneakers being scuffed up. She tilted her head and grinned, putting her hand up and gesturing with her middle finger for the thugs to come and get her. The thug bristled, You fucking bitch. He threw a haymaker, which the girl effortlessly dodged and countered with a high kick, knocking him into a wall his friends tried to help, but ended up sharing the same fate, being juggled upwards into the air, before plummeting to the ground. Seriously? Have you all masochists or something? Your bullying and invasion always results in this don't you idiots have anything better to do than steal people's lunch money and harass the girls. Naruko asked while chewing on some pocky go to some other school and bother them. Ah, we're not done yet. The leader growled as he and his cronies shakingly got to their feet. Of course you are not, Naruko snorted, finishing her pocky after all, you punching bags always come back for more like a bunch of miz. That this bitch. Naruko-chan. Where did you go? Wandering about in the hallway was a young woman with long, dark blue hair reaching her lower back, with heim cut bangs hovering above lavender-tinted pale white eyes, and an overall fair complexion, she also had a slender and buxom figure, complete with a large set of full, round G-cup breasts, which was tucked into the female Kanahara Academy uniform like Naruko, albeit one size too short. But showed off a creamy slice of her smooth belly. Name? Haika Hinadij. 18 rating. Naruko's princess. She was currently searching for her classmate and crush, Naruko, checking classroom to classroom for the blonde. 
Aw. Oh. Don't tell me you're in another fight again. She whined as she ran down the staircase, running past her fellow student. Whoa there. The student in question has platinum blonde hair tied in a ponytail that reached down her back, greener eyes, a fair complexion, and a slender figure with firm, sun-kissed plump breasts, she is also wearing the female Kanahara Academy uniform, albeit with a v-neck that showed her cleavage, and sparkling accessories on her person like a gal. That was Hinata as she looking for Naruko again. She wondered, the fact Shes not with her means, she groaned Shes in another fight. Naruko bobbed, weaved, and guarded against the thug's attacks, knocking aside clumsy strikes and retaliating with her own, fists and feet colliding so fast they were almost a blur, she ducked a wild swing, bounded off a wall, and unleashed a roundhouse kick that took down a few of the thugs. Chess just a girl. Not like those annoying bitches from Hans Academy. The leader snarled as Naruko knocked out a few of his boys come on, she obviously got those moves from kung fu movies get her, damn it. We're trying boss erg. Back. Naruko grabbed two of the thugs and rebounded her kicks off them, before finishing them with a jumping splits kick. Must I do everything myself? The leader yelled, charging at Naruko with his kendo stick raw. Naruko heaved the last thug over her shoulder and turned to see the kendo stick swing towards her however, a banana peel landed in front of the leader, causing him to miss Naruko and do the splits, since he never did any stretches, his pants split as he howled in pain. My balls. He howled, cradling them while rolling around. Naruko-chan. Naruko. -chan. Naruko. Naruko looked over her shoulder to see Hinata and Ino running over to her oh, hey Hinata-chan, Ino-chan. What brings you to these neck of the woods? Moo, we're not in a forest, Naruko-chan. Hinata whined, waving her arms around, I thought we were going to finally choose a club together. Instead, you are playing with these bozos, Ino noted again. Girls, someone has to stop them from harassing the other students, no one else will, since the teachers here suck Naruko shrugged and laughed at the thug leader's predicament, but really. Banana peel. What? Ino asked, pouting I like bananas. I quite literally told you to stop dieting. Naruko snapped, poking at her chest lest you wind as thin as a twig. The twig I am eating as much as you both do now. It doesn't mean that I neglect the healthy stuff. Ino snapped back, cupping her boobs with an impressive jiggle I mean, do you even see these puppies? Ha. Huh. You have much catching up to do Naruko teased her, thrusting her own boobs out and making them bounce. Ino gained a tick mark as her eye twitched yeah, so do you she bit back, glancing at Hinata who blushed. Uh, you bitch will make you pay the thug leader groaned as his goons carried him away, make my words ow. As usual, they're full of hot air Naruko said, rolling her eyes if you masochists want another dose of pain, you know they're to find me, databane. Bye bye, dickheads. Uzumaki-san. Naruko, Hinata, and Ino all flinched, recognizing the irate voice they slowly turned around, like whirring machinery, filled with dread. The object of doom in question was a 21-year-old young woman light blonde wavy hair that flowed down to her hip, light blue her eyes, fair skin, and a curvy hergless figure, complete with an ample bust, and wearing white suit jacket over a black blouse, white miniskirt, and black heels, she currently had a furious look on her face, as her eyes zeroed in on Naruko, hands on her wide hips. Oh crap Ino groaned, taking a step back. Hiya, bitch sensei. Naruko said brightly, much to the horror of Hinata and Ino. The older blonde growled, producing a riding crop from behind her for the last time, you will refrain from calling me that, Yuzumaki-san. It's Arena Jalavi, so get it right. The are gonna put me in detention anyway. Naruko shot back go big or go home. Yes, it seems the previous punishments didn't set you straight. You may think you are doing a public service for the school, but you always fail to resolve the matter peacefully. So if punishing you solely won't do the trick, Irina snarled, hitting her riding crop in her other hand, then those two lasses can join you in detention. What the f are you serious? Ino shrieked in rage. Naruto scowled at her, and you wonder why every single person in Kanahara calls you an insufferable bitch. You can't do this. Hinata added, stepping up Ino-san and I did nothing wrong. Irina grinned don't like it. Tough I have full authority from the principal to do it don't believe me. Let's go and see her now. Unknown location. In a forest area within Tokyo, a purple portal opened up with mysterious individuals coming out of it, most of them looked nothing like humans, being demonic in nature with feminine builds. The majority of them wore black suits covered in bones and shredded red armor on their bodies and limbs in addition, a white helmet mask covered most of their head except for their mouths, with a single eye being the prominent feature another prominent feature is their sizable chests, which ridiculously bounced with every step. Behind them stood a monstrous humanoid bat, a busty torso covered in black fur, gray skin on its limbs with black armor, and webbed wings with claws on its arms. 
the only one who was properly humanoid among them was a tall woman with long, dark brown hair, tied with a hairpin she had red eyes, though a red eye patch covered her left eye, a gold earring pierced her left ear, and her figure bore wide, sweeping but toned curves, plus a hefty bust of her own, she wore a sleeveless red kippow with openings on the side and chest areas, fingerless gloves. Along with thigh-high boots finally, she had a purple pendant hanging off her dress, completely glowing red eyes with a bloodthirsty grin. So this is the human world, eh? It stinks of clean air no matter, the bat monster said, waving her clawed hands in front of her face. Once Shin-sama enters this world again, it will once again become your perfect hellscape Jihanesha Tachi. But the snap of her fingers, the Kipau woman and foot soldiers stood at attention. Maruko, can't you keep out of trouble for at least five minutes? The irate principal yelled at the whistling Maruko. The principal was a woman with long blonde hair that reached down her back with the bangs framing her face, brown her eyes, and fair skin, she had a voluptuous body chest quite proud of, with huge K-cup breasts, her attire consisting of a green Hayori with a kanji for gamble on the back with a grey obi beneath it with matching pants, and open toed black sandals her obi has a v-neck opening. Revealing her ample, nearly overflowing cleavage, and she was quite young looking for a person entering her elderly days, thank you very much. Those jerks started it. Naruko replied, looking to the side with Hinata and Ino next to her plus, if I haven't intercepted them, they would have bullied our fellow students. On another note, why are Hinata-chan and Ino-chan being punished too? Because I gave Irina-sensei the power to punish you in any way she sees fit the next time you pull stunts like this, but I didn't think we would do this, Tsunade admitted, narrowing her eyes at a smirking Irina. You, you lost to her in a drunken bet, didn't you? Naruko growled, her eye twitching. Your godmother, not mine Irina said, her smirk never leaving her. Naruko sighed ugh, I'm sorry you got caught up in this, you too she apologized to them. It's fine, Naruko-chan if getting involved with you is a sin, then I'll accept the punishment Hinata assured her, holding her hand. Seriously, Hinata really has a fetish for foxy blondes, Ino muttered, shaking her head she's way more ahead than me. You girls can stop flirting now, because you are going to get down and dirty for your detention. Irina growled at her it'll make you think twice about fighting on the school grounds, Yuzumaki Naruto. Blow me Naruko countered, flipping her back. Irina shrieked as she whacked her riding crop on Tsunade's desk, I'm going to make you sorry. Watch the woodwork. Tsunade could only shake her head in exasperation as she grabbed a bottle of sake and downed it. I hope that Tengu is having a better day than I am. Here. Irina dropped a box of cleaning supplied in front of the girls, who were now wearing aprons over their school uniforms your new tools for the day. There's no way we'll get this done in a day. Ino shrieked, pointing around the room they were in. Irina had taken them to the local museum, whom the director is a drinking buddy of hers, and Tsunade one of the janitors was on vacation, so the basement was getting a bit dusty, since that janitor was the only one willing to clean and maintain it. This is stupid, Naruko grumbled, and flipped Irina off again, and you suck. Sorry, but you have me confused for the legendary sucker while I can't pull your friends into this again, consider this a lesson on how your actions affect those around you in the future, Irina said sternly. And you can go choke on a big fat one, you fucking bitch, Naruko snapped back, this time with two middle fingers wait, scratch that, since you don't even have a boyfriend to suck off. Irina seethed, bending her riding crop in rage kee, Just as foul-mouthed as your mother. I'm leaving, unlike you girls, who won't be until every speck of dust is gone. Bye-bye. She stomped off, sounding like a blubbering mess as she slammed the door behind her. That was cruel, Naruko-chan I don't think she's that bad, Hinata piped up, waving a duster at her, she might have insecurities that cause her to act that way. That's no reason for her to be a total and take her frustrations out on all of us, and now that you mention it, it may explain how she is always bothering the lovey dovey couples, Ino grumbled while putting on a face mask. This isn't an and I'm treat others as you would like to treat you that's how human interaction works, she acts like a bitch, I treat her like a bitch until she defrosts, Naruko explained as she dumped the cleaning supplies onto the floor, now let's get this detention over with, so I can choose which laxative to spike her food and drink with tomorrow. Ino sighed, drooping her head your war with her will never end. Anada giggled that's Naruko-chan for you shall never back down from anyone. Don't encourage her. Outside the museum, the bat monster with her Chihanesha foot soldiers and possessed human woman entered the back door of the museum as it was closing, the people coming out all screamed as the Chihanesha pushed and shoved them aside, even alright striking them away. What is wrong with these people? Admiring trinkets you believe you will never have and not taking them for yourselves. The Kipau woman growled, lifting a human by the neck and tossing them into a wall casually. Chihanesha, tear this place apart until you find those rainbow crystals. The bat monster commanded with a wave of her hand, it is the first step for Shin-sama to invade this pathetic world, make sure each one is accounted for. 
The Chihinesha screamed and squeaked in response and rushed into the museum, they continued to attack the civilians while ripping apart the exhibits, creating a scene of chaos. Back in the basement, the girls were hard at work Naruko was mopping the floor, Ino was dusting off the relics, and Hinata was rearranging the furniture. But you. Damn it, there were so many old artifacts here, and it's so damn dusty. Ino yelled and sneezed again it's getting into my hair. I swear I'm going to make bitch pay for this. Achoo. I'm surprised you are not cursing my name, Ino-chan, Naruko noted as she squeezed dirty water out of the mop you are in here because of me. Why would I blame you, Naruko? It's obvious that bitch is just jealous of my youth and good looks, Ino scoffed, while continuing to dust the relics and just using you to get to me. My little brother's not going to fuck you, you shotokan, Naruko snorted, with Hinata squeaking. Naruto kun is 16, you broken. Ino snapped back, getting into her face stop hugging him to yourself, Naruko. As if. You are only using him as an excuse to get to me. At least Hinata chan is more direct to wanting to jump my bones. Naruko countered, poking at Ino's blushing cheek. Or maybe, just maybe, Ino smirked right in Naruko's face, despite blushing madly I want you both just like Hinata. Beep. Hinata squeaked before fainting with a red and steaming face, knocking over a gold and silver circular relic. And Hinata-chan fainted as usual Naruko giggled. Aw come on, Hinata I just cleaned that, Ino whined. Naruko and Ino ran over to help Hinata up, while the relic fell to the floor it split open, with three orbs falling out of it, they rolled on the floor, stopping in different parts of the room. Ino groaned and now the crystals are on the floor. Crap, I hope they didn't shatter. Sorry about that, Ino san I'm okay now, Hinata said, bowing quickly let go get them. The girls went to retrieve the crystals Naruko picked up a red crystal, Hinata picked up a blue crystal, and Ino picked up a yellow crystal the three crystals suddenly pulsed through them and shined bright, the girls gasped as a vortex of the color they were each holding appeared above their heads and engulfed them all. Wah, what is this? Ino yelped as a yellow aura spread over her body. It feels violent, but gentle. Hinata whispered, seeing her own body enveloped in a blue aura. Whatever this is, it's filling me with energy. Naruko yelled as power coursed through thanks to the red aura. Soon, the three vortexes died down, leaving the three girls gasping for air as they left on all fours, their eyes were shining with sparks dancing on their bodies with their respective colors, with Naruko's being red, Hinata's blue and Ino's in yellow. Holy crap, what a rush. Naruko said, jumping up that was amazing, but seriously what in the world was that? I don't know, but they feel like bad news, Ino said, using a table to support herself like we awaken something we shouldn't have. What do we do, Naruko-chan? Hinata asked Naruko, who was finally coming down from her high. Ah, I feel that we should keep them, but since it's here at the museum first, they're not ours to have Naruko said as she peered into the red crystal she was holding, and grinned let's put them back for now. You plan on sneaking back to steal it, aren't you? Ino accused her as they put the crystal back into the slots. Hey, I'm a prankster, not a thief. Naruko snapped, dope slapping her on the head. Um, Naruko-chan, Ino-chan Hinata suddenly raised her voice as Naruko and Ino started to bicker and slap at each other, do you hear that? Naruko and Ino stopped before hearing the growing sounds of screams that were getting closer to their position. That doesn't sound good. Naruko said, hearing the sound of the outside door being busted open hide. She grabbed her friends and dragged them into the broom closet with them, just as the innermost door was blasted open the Chihanesha swarmed in, followed by the Kipa woman, who now had a red and black claymore on her shoulder. You. They could do with a bit of cleaning here. The Kipau woman exclaimed, waving her hand around I would never let my men let the cabins get anything like this. The people in this world truly are lazy. As the foot soldiers checked over the relics, the woman eyed the relic the girls were messing with and opened it, her eyes widened at the contents within, finding 20 plus different crystal gems around a bigger crystal prism orb in the center. I believe we have found our plunder, ladies. She said, closing it let's get back to Kmormari. She laughed as she left with the foot soldiers, with Naruko, Hinata, and Ino peeking their heads from out of the broom closet. That was Bidu from Genshin Impact, that new game Naruto's been playing there's no way she should be existing, so how is she here? Naruko wondered, looking at the door she just exited out of. Forget that. She and those things just took that relic with the crystals inside. Ino cried, pointing at the door what do we do? Calm down, Ino. We just need to get it back somehow. Naruko said. But how? Bidu and those things she was with look dangerous should we call the police? Hinata asked. Hello operator. Yes, a pirate woman and a bunch of armored humanoids with bouncing titties just robbed a museum yeah, that sounds like a rationale phone call to the police department, Naruko joked and shook her head yeah, no I'm going after them to get that relic back. I rather not be accused of being a thief in case someone does inventory. Ah wait, Naruko-chan. He'll come with you. 
Hinata shouted as she followed Naruko out. Boy, Naruko. Hinata. Wait a minute. Ino whined and grabbed her hair wa, don't leave me h-e-r-e she wailed, going after them. Yo, Kamoramari. I believe I found what you're looking for Bidu said and handed the bat monstrous the relic containing the crystals. Ah, Kagaya's cradle thank you, pirate woman it was quicker than I expected Kamoramari mused and opened the relic pirate woman, you didn't steal any for yourself, did you? Bidu frowned why would I when your bosses promised me the greatest of treasures in the new world. The crystals are beautiful, but I won't risk taking one. Then why are there three missing from Kagaya's cradle? The bad woman asked, opening the relic and showing Bidu the contents. Impossible. Bidu's eyes widened they were all there, I swear. She said as the foot soldiers that were with her nodded furiously in agreement. If you haven't taken them, then that means. Hey. Morimari, Bidu, and the Chihanesha looked to see Naruko, Hinata, and Ino running towards them, they skidded to a halt to maintain a safe distance, to avoid getting hurt. Uh, is it just me, or did we run faster than normal? Hinata asked, looking back and forth in shock. Humans. And three of them such bravery for showing their faces to us, Kamoramari mused with a raised eyebrow, such as the path of fools what do you want, besides your destruction. That relic. We'll need that back, or else bitch's director friend will think we stole it. Naruka replied, pointing at the group so, please. Kamoramari laughed so polite, but not out of respect, but fear. I don't blame you, for being in the presence of bad Ima Kamoramari would do that to simple humans. Name. Bad Ima, Kmormeri Origin. Bat Rating. Not Necroli. So, I ask you foolish humans did you touch the crystals inside? So what if we did? We're girls, we're attracted to pretty things, and jewels are a girl's best friend. Ino declared, despite her legs shaking. It's actually diamonds, but who cares at this point Naruko rolled her eyes with a sweat drop. Chess not wrong, Naruko-chan Hinata whispered with hearts in her eyes aimed at Naruko. HMPH. That explains the missing crystals despite Bidu here checking, you might want to check your persons, Kamoramari said while folding her arms. The girls looked at each other before patting themselves down as they did so, they felt something in their bosoms reaching down into their respective cleavages, they pulled out the crystal gems they originally picked up. What the? But how? Naruka wondered, sharing their bafflement with the others we put them back. The moment you three touched them, you were deemed worthy of the crystal's power, and thus bonded with them, Kamoramari explained, they are now with you until death, which I shall gladly grant you foolish girls. Chihanesha. The foot soldiers aimed their rifle staffs at the shocked girls and opened fire, the girls yelled out and tried to run away, but the force of the blast propelled them into the fire, and down to the ground, they shakingly got to their feet, trying to defend themselves, as the Chihanesha swarmed them Naruko was stuck in the face, Hinata was backhanded, and Ino was punched in the stomach. But the three then being tossed backward, sending them rolling on the ground. You dicks. Ino wheezed, holding her stomach. Curse your fate for being chosen by the rainbow crystals finish them, Kamoramari commanded, snapping her fingers. The Chihanesha aimed their weapons at the girls, with Naruko covering Hinata and Ino, the former using her body as a shield for them suddenly a huge gust of wind blew through the area, forcing everyone to brace themselves Kamoramari then shouted in rage, as Kagaya's cradle flew out of her hands. No, Kagaya's cradle. Who dares? The relic landed in the hands of a woman with a geisha outfit and a tengu mask on her face Shes 57 tall, had dark bluish hair, light violet eyes, creamy colored skin, and a small beauty mark on the left side of her chin, she had a voluptuous figure with huge gravity-defying H-cup breasts and black wings on her back, she wore a black kimono with red trim and a floral pattern. With matching sleeves she also had on a white nagajuban robe beneath her kimono and a yellow obi, arm guards, gold leg bands on her thighs, and red tengu bells finally, there was a bulky stone gauntlet strapped onto her left arm and wrist, her hand gripping the handle in the front. I dare, Imasa and the woman cooed tauntingly while removing her mask, Miyama no Nayatengu, Kazuhana Akemi is here. Name. Kazuhana Akemi Aka Nayatengage. 1000 plus rating. Naughty Tengu Princess. Is she one of yours? Bidu asked, looking at her in confusion. No I've never seen her before, but I have heard of her my master tried to conscript her to their service, but she refused, Kamoramari growled, glaring at the female Tengu hand that back, Tengu, or face my wrath. Um, am I seeing things, or does she have wings? Ino asked, blinking. I'm seeing the same wings as you, Ino-chan. She was in the last dead or alive tournament with Hinoka senpai Naruko said, her mouth gaping open so it wasn't a gimmick. Hinata looked unsure, but is she here to save us? Nayatengu smirked as she looked from the vulnerable girls and back to the monsters sorry Emma-san, but this doesn't belong to you she retorted as she opened the relic I can't count on those foolish girls from Hansm, Hibiho and Jessen, so it's time to finish what my mother helped start. 
she took out the crystal in the middle and was engulfed in the same vortex Naruko, Hinata, and Ino were in, except unlike them, it was constantly changing colors like a rainbow when it died down, Nayatengu was unwinded with a smirk on her face, holding the crystal high, she inserted it into her stone gauntlet. The contract making it shine as bright as the sun as the crystal sunk into the device when it died down, the stone crumbled to reveal a shining gold and silver gauntlet on her arm, and in her grip at the same time, a gold utility belt formed around her waist, with a few containment cases containing tools and gadgets in them. Hey, that's what happened to us. Ino exclaimed, voicing her friend's surprise. Whoa, now that's some good-looking treasure. Bidu said with sparkling eyes, and raised an eyebrow when Kumoramari took a step back him, what's wrong, Kumoramari? Impossible. The masked regent assured Shin-sama that the Senranger's morphers were found and destroyed. Kumoramari exclaimed, pointing shakingly at the said morpher I knew that damn human cold be trusted. They are surprised, Imasan. The origin of the Senrangers are ninja of course you fools would be deceived in their destruction, Nayatengu said as she opened a rectangular container as thick as a book and pulled out a card after all, you destroyed the old morpher models from years past, and the world has changed its out with the old and in with the new. Damn you, Tengu. Kumoramari snarled and gestured at her Chihanesha. Don't let her transform. The Chihanesha wailed and charged at her Nayatengu grinned as she dodged the laser blast they shot at her, when several of them got close, she weaved and countered their simple attacks, tripping up those that tried to kick her and redirecting their punches towards one of their own however, one of them got under her guard. And another caught her fist thankfully she managed to avoid the attack on her blind spot and leapt away from the swarm. Um, upgrades huh? You almost got me but you lot are the same weak foot soldiers as before strength and numbers can only get you so far with me time to take this up a notch now how did we say this back in the day, Nayatengu said in mock wonderment before inserting the card into her gauntlet ah, that's right. It's Morphin T-I-M-E. Loading. Rainbow. The Morpher announced in a feminine metallic voice at the same time, a wave of energy swept across the area standby to hinge. Nin nin nin, ninja ninja time. Nin nin nin, ninja ninja time it chanted as a shuriken-like object with various colors appeared at the end of the gauntlet. Behold. The return of the Senrangers. Nayatengu declared and spun the shuriken ranger style. Shinobi tension. Change, Senranger the morpher chanted as the shuriken spun, generating energy that surrounded Nayatengu. Several energy lines that resembled scrolls encircled her form with lightning coming out of them and sparking dancing her body the lines then wrapped around her body, with an astral projection of a Tengu popping out and roaring with malicious intent, it drew back to Naya Tengu. Who now had a sleek form-fitting suit forming around her with a shinobi shizoku style top with a symbol for yin-yang on the left side, silver sleeves with colored armbands and white gloves with a morpher on the left arm, a sword sheath on the back, the same golden utility belt, a miniskirt with black pant leggings, and colored boots. The suit had all the colors of the rainbow from the top down. Red on the head, orange, yellow, and green, on the top and arms, cyan and indigo on the miniskirt, and violet and pink on the legs finally, her wings burst from her back, sporting the same rainbow color scheme as her suit. Ha! Hey. Nayatengu smirked as a red helmet formed around her head, complete with a black visor with gold accents around it and white lines around the mouth area. Holy crap, Sentai Rangers do exist Naruko breathed in amazement. Wow! Hinata whispered, holding her crystal close to her chest. Shinobi Master. Tengu Nin, Senrin Rainbow. Nayatengu introduced herself, stomping her foot on the ground, causing it to shake as she shifted into her signature Tengu stance. Shinobi Master Senrin Rainbow the Morpher announced. Hum, attack me if you dare. Nayatengu challenged the Ima, flaring her wings and getting into a Tengu Du stance. Damn it. Bidu, Jihanesha, destroy her. A furious Kumoramari snapped and turned to Naruko, and the others ill deal with these foolish girls before they join her, myself. Understood. Bidu confirmed and charged alongside the foot soldiers towards the waiting Nayatengu. Oh dear oh dear now I feel insulted that I'm not worth your time if that's how it's going to be Nayatengu murmured before speaking into her morpher Karen-chan, you're watching me right? Have ten chance and three morphers over to those little kittens. Of all the people to grab those gems find Tenten, transport three morphers stat. Roger that. Thank you very much Nayatengu said and dodged incoming attacks as the Chihanesha swarmed her, with Bidu picking her moment to strike. Also, the power of the main crystal is greater than what we calculated, and that Morpher model is unable to handle it, Tenton just looked over the data and estimated that you have less than 5 minutes before you lose your transformation. I was expecting that that's more than enough time for me. Nayatengu said, blowing away several foot soldiers with her fan definitely going to have to find that power source to sustain this form. Oh crap, Shes coming this way. Ino shouted, pointing frantically at the incoming Kumoramari. Ino-chan, take Hinata-chan and run. Naruko yelled as she charged at the bad Ima. 
Ah, Naruko-chan, no. Hinata yelled, resisting Ino trying to pull her back Naruko-chan. Oh? So you want to die first, huh? How brave, yet foolish Kumaramari praised as Naruko leaped at her kai. She unleashed an supersonic echoing blast at Naruko, making the latter fall to the ground, screaming and holding her ears. My ears. Naruko shrieked, rolling around the ground until she was picked up by her top, she gagged as she was punched in the stomach, before being lifted by her throat. Only human Kumaramari mused and looked over her shoulder just like your friends. Naruko-chan. It's dangerous, Hinata. Kumaramari backhanded Naruko in the face, sending her flying to the arms of Hinata and Ino, making them fall to the ground, she then fired off another supersonic screech, cracking the ground beneath the girls and making it explode, sending them yelling and flipping uncontrollably in the air. Kittens. Naya Tengu cried out as the girls landed with a thud on the ground get out of my way. She snarled, rapidly tapping her feet on the ground, using her fan to gather a vortex of wind Tengu wind style. Great breakthrough. Before unleashing it to blow the Chihanesha away. Her senses suddenly spiked, making her quickly maneuver her form to avoid beat a surprise attack, the claymore was implanted into the ground where Naya Tengu was, allowing Naya Tengu to step on the blade and kick Bidu back. Yara nothing like the MI can see that Yara Mirage, just like the ones before you Naya Tengu noted, while balancing herself on the claymore how about it? Submit yourself to me and help the Senrangers eliminate the Ima threat for good. Ha! Even if you tame me, there are other mirages like myself from all walks of life, if you think you can catch us all, you have another thing coming. Bidu retorted and went on the attack, swinging her claymore around towards the transformed female Tengu. Ara, aren't you a feisty one? Naya Tengu praised with a laugh as she countered her attacks I don't have a lot of time left, so let's make this quick. Back with the girls, they were weakly backing away as Kumaramari advanced on them, a flash of light suddenly appeared in front of them, materializing into devices similar to Nyatengus Morpher, except smaller in size, and not gauntlet-like they came with wrist straps, and had LCD screens, keypads, and circular parts that allowed something to be inserted into. Boy. No time to explain. Put these one if you want to live. A voice sounded off from it. Hey. Karen, is that you? Naruko asked, recognizing the sound of her cousin's voice as she picked the device. Yes, it's me Naruko. I don't know how you found herself there, but we can trade stories later. If you want to live to see tomorrow and show your brother a good time, then you need to pull those crystals you bonded with into the morpher and transform now. Is this really the time Naruko shrieked with sharp teeth at the unexpected teasing, while putting the morpher on anyway? More like is this really happening right now Ino added, and saw Hinata putting on her morpher Hinata. It's obvious we're stuck with this, and since Naruko-chan is willing to go along with this, so am I. Hinata said and looked at her own blue crystal. You are so in freaking in love it's insane. Ino shrieked while wide-eyed fine. He'll play along because I really don't want to die here. She huffed, slamming the morpher onto her wrist. As soon as the morphers touch their left arms, the devices react by strapping themselves onto their wrists, the girls then did what Nyatengu did, by pressing their crystal gems onto the morphers, the crystal sank into them, and shined as bright as the sun, as the golden utility belt that Nyatengu had on appeared around their waists. But the book-like device opening up and shooting cards into their hands. You foolish brats. Kumaramari screeched and charged at them. All right girls. You saw what Kazuhana-san did, so let's try it out ourselves and hope for the best. Naruko said as they got to their feet it's morphin time. I can't believe you said that Ino muttered under her breath as they all inserted the cards into the front of the morphers. Loading. Red. Blue. Yellow. Stand by to henge the morphers said before starting to sing nin nin nin, ninja ninja time. Nin nin nin, ninja ninja time. Now, spin the senran star key. Karen said, as the shuriken-like objects appeared on the morpher and chant. Oh god, make it stop. Ino whined, shaking her arm that had the morpher, and yelped when Kumaramari closed in eep. Just follow my lead. Naruko said exasperatedly ready. Ready? Hinata said cheerfully while Ino grumbled under her breath. Ranger style. Shinobi tension. They chanted, spinning the Senran star keys. Change, Senranger. Their shurikens spun and generated energy that surrounded the girls, they held their shining morphers up high, with several energy lines that resembled scrolls encircling their forms, resulting in an explosion of power that knocked Kumaramari back a few feet. Lightning arced from the scroll projections and danced along their bodies, with the scroll lines then slamming into their bodies, with an astral projection of different animals coming out of them for Naruko it was a fox, Hinata a rabbit, and Ino a bull, all fiercely roaring before retreating into the girls. 
Like Nyatengu, Naruko, Hinata, and Ino now all had the same sleek form-fitting suits, a shinobi shizoku style top with the symbol for yin-yang on the left side, silver sleeves with colored armbands and white gloves with a morpher on the left arm, a sword sheath on the back, the same golden utility belt, a miniskirt with black pant leggings, and colored boots finally. The helmet formed around their heads, complete with a black visor with gold accents around it, and white lines around the mouth area. The only difference is that Naruko had a red suit, Hinata had a blue suit, and Ino had a yellow suit. Holy crap, that was amazing, Dadabeo. Naruko gasped, looking herself over I feel like I've drunk 10 coffees. Senrin read. This feels incredible. Hinata added, admiring their forms I feel so safe and secure in this suit. Senrin blew. I can't believe this happened Ino said, patting herself down it's like all my fear is gone, and I can do anything. Senrin yellow. Damn it, more rangers. Kumoromari growled Yao Pei for trying to interfere in Shinsama's grand plan. Chihanesha. She snarled, snapping her fingers to summon more foot soldiers kill them quickly. The new Chihanesha complied as they charged at them. Let's do this. Naruko yelled, and she and her friends clashed with the foot soldiers. Naruko kicked a few away and flipped away from some attacks, she executed a roundhouse kick that sent a Chihanesha into a tree, she landed a few strikes and kicks that down the foot soldiers from the force of her attack, and elbowed one coming from behind her let's try this on for size. She said, taking the katana from her side. Senran slasher, it announced. Naruko admired the blade for a moment, before getting back into the fight she swung the longsword around, cutting down the foot soldiers around her suddenly, she felt something feral inside her, roaring to be let out. Ah. Call to the spirit inside. She yelled, her hands glowing a fiery red instincts awaken, Kitsune. Naruko unleashed the red fox spirit that bounded forward and swiped at the Chihanesha, destroying them on the spot. That was relentless. Naruko exclaimed as the red fox spirit rubbed up on her, I always loved foxes. Nice to meet you. She said, watching it retreat back into her, ah, I know what to do for my roll call. There won't be a roll call for you, human. Kumoromari retorted while trying to attack her from behind she screamed her supersonic scream, but Naruko leapt away from the blast radius what? Take this, bat lady. Naruko yelled, slashed downwards onto the Emma. Ah. Kumoromari yelled, getting knocked backwards as sparks and blood came out of her body impossible. Relentless shinobi. Kitsune Nin, Senrin read. Naruko introduced herself, her Senrin slasher on her shoulder, and her right hand out S-A-N-J-O-U databang. Pose is a work in progress. Ha. Anata used her Wudang martial art consisting of Baguazhang, Tai Chi, and Xin Yi Quan martial art practices to keep the foot soldiers at bay, she maneuvered her body like water, striking the Chihanesha at their weak spots that fell them on the spot, she also used her maneuverability to redirect and counter attacks, making the Chihanesha attack each other, she flipped around the swarm some more. Reaching to her back and pulled out a ninjato with a blue blade Senrin Shinavigatana, it announced twirling it around her hand, she dashed around the food soldiers, cutting them down rapid fashion, she then felt extremely jumpy, and the need to unleash it. Call to the spirit inside. She cried, her hands glowing blue instincts awakened, Yusagi. Anada unleashed the blue rabbit spirit that hopped around her, before attacking the Chinhanesha it bounded off each one, destroying them in fiery explosions. Well, it makes sense that Ima Rabbit and Naruko Chan's a fox, Hanada used as the blue rabbit spirit went back into her relentless shinobi fox okay. Tranquil shinobi. Yusagi Nin, Senrin Blue. She declared herself, sheathing her sword and twirling around. Tranquil try horny for blondes. Ino shouted from the side, even as she drew the gun hanging from her belt. Senrin shot. Beat this. Ino yelled, furiously firing on the incoming foot soldiers. She got a few, but the ones she didn't get got too close yelled, she flipped around them in fright, using her gymnastics, acrobatic, and ballerina training to evade them still holding on to her Senran shot, she spun around, firing rapidly to destroy them go away. She yelled, uppercutting one into the sky, she jumped on another one and hop stepped on them to get out of the crowd of Chinhanesha getting out of the crowd, she twisted her body around and opened fire, managing to get some of them after she landed. Arg, how annoying. Ino stamping her foot angrily, her hands glowing yellow just go down already. Call to the spirit inside. Instincts awakened, Ushi. The yellow bull spirit burst out from her and charged at the foot soldiers that survived Ino's attempts to kill them, Ino blinked and gaped under her helmet as the bull ran roughshod over the foot soldiers before returning to her. Well, that happened she muttered as the yellow bull spirit returned to her no way I'm telling Sakura I'll never hear the end of it she murmured before going to assist Hinata and Naruko oh yeah. Naruko and Hinata did that thing. So. She twirled around and stuck a pose sparkling shinobi. Ushi Nin, Senrin Yellow. Meanwhile, Nyatengu knocked Bidu back and looked at her morpher. 
DSK, time's almost up, she said, noticing Bidu charging at her let's make the most of this. I haven't had this much fun in my own world, but let's wrap this up Bidu held her claymore high behold the strength that fell the great beastation. Stormbreaker. She yelled, creating a violet electric sphere around herself with purple dragon circling her. Naya Tengu smirked under her helmet and placed her hand over the yin-yang symbol on her suit, I won't stop you let this clash be our last. Summon. Senrenex Kalisaber. She cried, materializing a giant blade she wielded effortlessly in one hand come, Mirage. After a moment, they rushed towards each other, with Naya Tengu inserting her Senran star key into her weapon. Fall, Tengu. Tidecaller. Tengu style. Dance of shadows. Senranissan. Bidu slashed through Naya Tengu, who fell to the ground in a heap Bidu frowned and blinked, her eyes then widening to see the suit stuffed with hay, with a paper note on the head that said, nice try. Before Bidu could react, the real Naya Tengu zoomed around her slashing her from different angles, Bidu went for one more desperate strike, but Naya Tengu dodged it and finished her with a superpowered slash. Not bad, Tengu Bidu groaned, falling to her knee as her glowing red eye went away, restoring her normal eye in back to my old self in the end. It doesn't have to be the end, Naya Tengu said, taking out a blank card as Bidu fell on her back join the Senrangers as our Mirage summon until the fight against Shin is done. Well, it's better than dying while in the line of duty of the Ima, and it doesn't sit well with my pride as a pirate captain very well, it'll join your Senrangers, just be warned that there are more powerful Mirages than me, and most of them are not from my world, Bidu said as Naya Tengu laid the card on her chest. I understand welcome to the team, Bidu, Naya Tengu said, watching as Bidu was absorbed into the card. As her own transformation finally died down, Naya Tengu picked up the card and admired it, seeing Bidu's image on the card, along with her stats, she then turned her attention to the three new Senrangers, taking on the bad Ima, Kamorimari. I'm going to make you brats pay. Kamorimari snarled, flapping her wings. Senrangers. Call upon your personal weapons to finish that Ima. Naya Tengu called out to them use the crests on your chests. Like this. Naruko asked, pressing her hand on her chest. Some and she gasped as the yin-yang symbol shined, materializing a red broadsword sword in front of her Senrenek sword woe. Cool. The Nada and Eno looked surprised under their helmets, then nodded to each other and pressed the yin-yang crests. Summon. Senrenek's arrow. Senrenek's chakram. The bow. Hinata gasped, appraising her blue bow but no arrows. What am I? Xena. Eno wondered, also appraising her yellow bladed ring. It doesn't matter what kind of toys you bring out. You will all die here. Kamormari declared and unleashed another supersonic screech that ruptured the ground in front of her. Ah. The girls braced themselves as the sonic attack came over them, shaking them to the core Hinata, however, managed to pull the strings of her bow back, an arrow forming in the bow, she looked at her weapon in wonder, before firing the arrow, which exploded on contact with their enemy, ending the sonic attack with a screech of pain. Back, my throat. The monster cried out, clutching at her neck ack. Nice shot. Eno cheered, jumping up and down. Finish her off you idiot. Naruko yelled as he charged forward. Ah, right. Ino threw her chakram at the bad Ima, who dodged it, but it arsed in the air and struck her from behind, while Kamoramari was distracted by Naruko charging at her, Kamoramari yelped as she was knocked off guard, allowing Naruko to strike her with her sword, sparks and blood spurting out of the monster. Ah, damn you brats. Kamoramari yelled as Ino caught her chakram. Oh yeah, we're definitely in a real life Takusatsu. Naruko said, inserting her ninja star key onto her X sword she spun it, causing the sword to flare with a red aura. Senranissan. Eat this. Name to be determined so final red slash. Naruko yelled, slashing Kamorimari down the middle. Aya. Kamorimari cried out, blood pouring out with more sparks exploding out of her I will not fall to you. I still stand. Ugh, still alive. Okay then. Naruko growled and turned to Hinata and Inoi, a little help. On it. Hinata said as she and Ino inserted their own ninja star keys into their weapons and spun them. Senranissan. Blue exploding arrow. Below dancing ring. Hinata fired an oversized bow while Ino threw her chakram, the bladed ring growing bigger and faster, the chakram danced and sliced around Kamorimari, who tried to defend against it until the arrow exploded onto her. Once more onto the bridge. Final red X slash. Naruko said, this time slash diagonally across Kamorimaris twice across her chest in an X formation. Anu. Shinsamai ai ai. Kamorimari screamed, exploding into a fiery ball of dark fire. That's one for the record books. Naruko said, resting her sword on her shoulder. We did it. Hinata cheered, jumping up and down. I think that took a year off my life, Ino mumbled as she fell on her ass. 
All three girls took their helmets off, Naruko and Ino originally had their hair tied in pigtails and a ponytail respectively, their hair ribbons were lost in their transformations, and now their hair was down, with their bangs sticking to their sweaty faces. That was a job well done, kittens while there is room for improvement, the crystals are chosen well, Nayatengu said, hiding her mouth behind her fan, I hope you realize that Shes not the only Emma out there there will be more. I thought as much Naruko sighed, while Ino whined. Nayatengu walked over to Kagaya's cradle and picked it up just as she had her hands on it, a black rope suddenly attached itself to the relic and yanked at it. What? Nayatengu gasped while keeping a firm grip on the cradle. They'll take that. The purple beam then hit Nayatengu, causing the relic to slip from her grasp, as she was sent crashing into a tree. Who the hell Naruko asked as the relic landed in the hands of the assailant Wa. The girls reacted too late when the same beam impacted the ground near them, knocking them back. Their assailant was a woman with short wine red hair reaching down her neck in a bob cut, which paired well with her violet eyes and red lipstick, she had a slender frame with large breasts, which was hugged tightly by a skin-tight red and black suit, with a V-cut reaching to her belly, that showed off her cleavage, she walled looked lovely. If not for her bloodthirsty smile that made the girls shiver. You impossible. Nayatengu growled, picking herself up the taman of Gasha village killed you. How are you still alive, Aboro? Name? Aboro. Age? Redacted. Braiding. Just the worst. Bold you like to know. Aboro said, holding up Kagaya's cradle not that this world will live long to find out. Nayatengu narrowed her eyes I see so your master Edwin Black has formed an alliance with Shin. It was mutually beneficial for us all soon, Demon City Tokyo will spread over not just Japan, but the entire world. It'll gel in perfect with Shin-sama's plan for this puny world. Aboro said and leapt high into the sky and with the power of these remaining crystals, there is nothing you can do to stop us. You talk too much. While Nayatengu and Aboro were talking, Naruko, Hinata, and Ino recovered and put their helmets on they were about to attack, until their Senran X weapons started glowing when they examined them closely, they shook when they got close getting an idea, they combined their weapons, putting the sword on the bow and drew it back, locking it in then, they added chakram on the flat side of the blade. Completing their creation. Senran X canon origin. They declared, with Naruko holding it and Hinata and Ino supporting her. Wait, why did we say origin? Ino wondered with a question mark above her head. Obviously it's not complete, but it'll have to do. Hinata said exasperatedly and nodded to Naruko we're ready whenever you are, Naruko-chan. Yosh. Naruko grabbed her Senran star key and locked it into the cannon let's do it. Ha. You think your puny weapon will. Fire. A multicolored beam erupted from the combination attack and shot towards a shock to Boro, who yelped and raised Kagaya's cradle in front of to defend herself, when the beam impacted the relic, a bright light shone from it, making Aboro cry out as the relic grew hot, she let go of it just in time for the light to explode, sending her down to the ground. Oh no Nayatengu muttered as she saw energy leaking out of the relic no, no, no. The energy around Kagaya's cradle crackled and sparked the next moment, it unleashed a massive explosion, shaking the ground below at the same time, several streaks of light in various colors shot across the sky in all directions. Naruko began to sweat oops. What just happened? Hinata squeaked, looking around the sky. I think we fucked up. Ino yelled, looking terrified under her helmet. The crystals. Damn you. Aboro shrieked, grabbing the now empty relic I'm going to kill you all. Her eyes shone with an even more insane bloodthirsty light. Hey, you are the one who used it as a damn shield. Ino snapped and helped Naruko position the cannon to aim at Aboro, we got enough to waste her. No Nayatengu walked in front of the trio, facing down Aboro what's done is done, and probably for the best she said, and brought her morpher to her mouth Karen-chan, get us out of here. Roger that, Kazahana sent preparing to transport you all in 3, 2, 1. You are not going anywhere. The Boro fired an energy beam at the group, but they were then enveloped by energy of their own power, before they were shot up into the sky. No. Damn you. Get back here. Aboro screamed, shaking her fist at them. You had one job, Aboro. Aboro froze in fear as a humanoid woman walked past her, looking up to where the Senrangers escaped the woman shook their head and glanced at Aboro in disappointment. She had light brown hair tied in a ponytail with bangs framing her face, blood red her eyes, a slender and physically fit body with G-cup breasts, her attire was a skimpy armor that exposed most of her skin, except her breasts and nether regions, like a witch blade armor, she also had a purple gem embedded in her upper chest. Shin was promised those crystals and a swift entry into this rotten world, and without them, it's now going to take some time now we have to retrieve them the woman said, folding her arms. My apologies Aboro muttered with gritted teeth Lady Kasumi. Name. Lady Kasumiage. 20 rating. Broken Kinoichi. 
I'm not the one you need to apologize to Lady Kasumi said with narrowed eyes before unfolding her arm come, let us report back to the castle Shin, and our master need to know about the return of the Senrangers. As the two faded into a dark mist, a third party walked out from behind a tree, an elderly woman wearing a long green hakuma shirt, a white kimono, beige sleeves, a dark grey jacket, a pearl necklace, a red shinobi scarf, and sunglasses on her head. The Senrangers, huh? She mused and smoked her smoking stick a fair back, then Shin's not far behind seems that your path of the shinobi will only get harder from here on out Asuka. End of episode 01. Characters introduced. Naruto Naruko Yuzumaki, Hinata Hayuga, Ino Yamanaka, Tsunade Senju, Karen Yuzumaki. Assassination Classroom Arena Jalavi. Genshin Impact Bidu. Heyman Inasagi Aboro, Edwin Black. Better Alive Ninja Gaiden Nayatengu, Kasumi, Demon Kasumi from a certain Kanoichi series, Masked Regent. Senrin Kagura Shin, Sayori Jasmine, Asuka. Senrin Ranger Suit Description. Note. The Senranger suits have elements of the Ninja Sentai Kakuranger, Alien Rangers, Ninpu Sentai Hurikanger, Ninja Storm, Samurai Sentai Shinkanger, Samurai, and Shuriken Sentai Ninjanger, Ninja Steel, more importantly, since this is Senran Kagura, the suits are sleek form-fitting, for maximum bounciness. Helmets. A mix of Kakuranger and Hurikanger helmets. Top. Black and colored Shinobi Shizoku top from Ninjanger. Arms. Silver sleeves, colored armbands and white gloves from Herkinger, and Morpher on left arm. Back. Sword sheaths that hold the Senran Slasher from Kakuranger and Herkinger. Bottom. Black pants with colored miniskirt and boots from Shinkinger, and a utility belt that holds Senran shot and gadgets. Notes. Nyatengus name is based off suggestions I found on a past tweet about the subject via the Nyatengus wiki page. Dehanesha Breastbones, the best name I tired to come up with for foot soldier mooks. More Maria Bat Monster I came up with. Nyatengus Morpher is similar to the Kyranger's Morpher. Naruko, Hinata, and Eno's Morpher is a cross between the Ninja Storm and Overdrive Mercury Ranger Morphers. Mirage are assists for the Senrangers when they are captured. The Infobox is a reference to the Scott Pilgrim series. Necroli is from Power Rangers Mystic Force. The roll call poses are a work in progress. Vainly, there will be more Senrangers on the horizon. Hope you enjoyed the new story, and I'll see you next year BYE. Anahara Academy, Principal's Office. Sunaid was at her desk, drinking a bottle of Seikha. She sighed, her cheeks red drinking is the best. She took another swig as she admired the peaceful sight. She suddenly heard a whooshing sound, causing her to swing her chair around to find four beams of light, with Nyatengu materializing first. Nyatengu, I see you retrieved Kagaya's cradle and got three new Senrangers, Sunaid said, raising her bottle of Seik nice. Yes and no Kagaya's cradle is in the hands of the enemy, but the crystals aren't we've got three, but the rest are missing, Nyatengu said, as the three Senrangers materialized and fell to the floor in a heap. Right then he'll open up the secret way Tsunade said, getting up. She went over to a bookcase and partially pulled out several different books in a sequence, as the Senrangers recovered, the bookcase rumbled, moving aside to reveal an elevator they looked from the elevator before noticing their surroundings. So, can I see the faces of the ones who'll save the world from certain doom, she asked, looking behind Nyatengu she stared at the Senrangers, who finally noticed Tsunade, and started to shake what's wrong. Ah, don't mind the kittens they got out of a rough battle Nyatengu said, and turned to them go on introduce yourselves. With some hesitation, much to Nyatengu's confusion, the girls finally took their helmets off. Hi Tsunade Bachan if this is some kind of prank, trust me when I say I have much worse planned Maruko grumbled, her eye twitching. Wait, you know each other? Nyatengu inquired, looking back and forth between the two. Thanks for watching.